What's up guys? I hope everybody's doing well. Today I'm showing you how to build or actually the parts that you're going to need to build your Ingenious Mini. I strongly suggest you watch this video all the way to the end because there's important bits of information pretty much everywhere. All right guys, so we are here at Home Depot. We're going to head in. I'm going to show you all the materials you need to build your Ingenious Mini. By the way, it's the first time I take you guys on my building adventures. So I'm really happy about that. So I guess I'll see you inside. All right, so at the lumber section of Home Depot, uh, we've got in front of us those two by two by eights. So this is pretty much what we need. Here's the sticker on that. Uh, so that's gonna be SPF, so spruce, pine, fir, which is basically one of those three, uh, one of those three types of wood or lumber. So that's good for us. Uh, if you take a look at that, they have them in bundles of, uh, in bundles of four or six here, but they're $3.02 a piece. And we're going to need seven pieces of that. So seven times two by two by eight in SPF should run you about, the Canadian prices will run you about $21 plus tax. I know you guys in the States have great prices, so good for you if you get cheaper than that. But that's what you need in terms of lumber. All right, so let's take a look at the hinges you're going to need. Uh, we're integrating hinges in this model so that you can uh, basically fold it and bring it back inside in the winter. So... I wasn't able to find the flat ones uh, like the ones that were used in the photos I posted on Instagram, but these will do the same. So if you can find two inch, uh, what we call back flap hinges, so they just have to basically be like this. Two sides, it's got a swivel in the middle, and that's it. So we're going to screw this part at the top here to one side of the frame. The other side here is going to go to the other side of the frame and we'll have a swivel motion like this. So they have different models for different lengths. As long as it doesn't exceed two inches in width, which is the width of our lumber, we're going to be good with that. So obviously I'm a fan of getting things that are cost efficient. I think these small ones here will do the job. They're $1.80 a piece here. Uh, so you guys in the US, I'm sure you can find that for like $1.50 or less. If you want it to be a little bit more solid, you can invest in better hinges all the way up to this model here, which is about one and a half inch wide. So, so that should do the trick and that's it. Get yourself two of these and that's going to be second part of what we need for this project. All right, so that's the part where I'm a specialist, the gutters. What we're going to look at here is two models. This is the model I use on my farm, by the way. So I've been talking about it forever. I never showed you guys. Uh, some people didn't believe me that it's just a standard regular model from Home Depot. So here it is. That's going to be a five inch wide uh, gutter. Let me just grab one here. It's not stuck into the others. All right, so obviously some of them are going to have been compressed by transport like this guy here. This is quite obviously not five inches wide. So, uh, but yeah, most of them are going to be, let's just get this guy out of the way and we'll look at the one that's right behind it because it's better shaped. Okay, so that's a better shaped one. If you take a look at that here, so it's 10 foot long. It's going to be five inches wide. At least that's what they say. But in my measurements, these plastic ones have never really been five inches wide. So uh, obviously they're quite cheap. They're going to be $7.40 a piece. Uh, so it's up to you guys to decide whether you want to go for cost efficiency or if you want to get a more expensive model, which I'm going to show you in just a second. So let's just walk over and find out their other five inch model which is actually a real five inch and you'll see the difference between these two so so the model that we have right here let me just pull it out all right that is a real five inches so i'll just slide it down on the ground here see the distance between my fingers it's much wider than it was before so i'm not sure how they come up with these uh these sizes or how they measure their stuff or maybe they're coming out of the factory uh, as five inches and then transport actually uh, changes their shape but as you're going to see here these gutters are $18.20 a piece the other ones were $7.50 or so so it's two and a half times the price but these guys will use a lot more soil but they'll give you better results so it's really up to you to find out how much you're willing to invest into your system uh, but as you've seen in all of my videos and all of my content in the last few years the uh, plastic model works just fine, but this is a better option. So whether you choose to use the more expensive model or the, um, the value model I showed you before, you're gonna need three like this. So three pieces of 10 foot long will give us 30 feet of, uh, of rain gutters and we'll be able to, uh, to build our system using those. 
end caps. Okay, let's take a look at end caps. If you guys have been following my work for the last few years, you've probably noticed I do not have end caps on, on my systems. And when people ask me the reason why, I always cite price concerns. So this is for the expensive model, the aluminum gutter that I just showed you before at $18. These caps are $2.24 piece, which is reasonable. Uh, it's up to you to decide whether you want to cap it or not. Obviously, it looks better. Uh, you're probably going to use these systems in your garden, so you probably have more budget per unit than I do, considering I build 300 plus of these at a time. So uh, for me, it becomes a concern. For you guys, it's a question of choice. Obviously, you can skip those if you want, but you're going to have some of the... Uh, some of the soil is going to leak out of the gutters a little bit at the ends and you're probably going to have a couple of inches on each end where you can't really plant anything because it's going to be uh, sloping a little so that's for the uh that's for the larger gutter model or the more expensive one let's walk over there a little bit and let's go find out where they have the caps for the uh for the cheaper model here so here we go okay so the caps are here uh, this is going to be for the uh, plastic model. These guys have a, a little bit of a better fit. If you look at that, they have this little gasket here, so or this little liner, which prevents... It's not going to be completely waterproof, by the way, uh, unless you silicone this in. It makes a, for a, a neat finish. Uh, but, as you can see, they're $9.63 a pair. So in order to cap a... In order to cap a $7.62 gutter, you're going to need to spend $9.63. Now, I think you guys understand now why I'm not buying these caps. Obviously, like I said, for you, it's a nicer finish at home. Uh, if you have the budget for it, go for it. Your system is going to be better. You're going to have a little bit more space to grow in. And it's going to look better as well. So up to you to decide if you want to cap them or not. Again, the option is yours. All right. So in order to assemble your structure, you're going to need some deck screws or some wood screws. Uh, three inches is long enough for that. So we need to go through a two by two and then we have an extra inch left for anchoring in. So that's great. Uh, so just regular three inch screws uh, and just try to get a small box because they have a lot of look, a lot of large boxes there. Obviously, we're not building a house. We're going to need less than 20 of those. So less than 20 puts me at about I'm trying to save money here. Again, keep in mind, this is Canada. Everything's overpriced. So I know you feel sorry for me. So that's a 65 piece box. Uh, these are eight by three screws. So that's great. If we actually look at the length of the screws through the box, we can tell right away they're going to be good. So one box of these will set you back $9.46 here in Canada. And that's one more step towards completion of our project. So while we're here, we're going to get the, uh, the screws for our hinges as well. So one and a half inches is long enough. Actually, we don't want anything longer than this because if we get something longer, then we're going to go through the lumber and we're going to have a pointy, sharp end protruding from the other side. So again, same thing. We're going to use 12 of these. So again, don't get too much stuff unless you've got other projects to complete. All right, zip ties or cable ties. So uh, we're going to need this to secure the gutters to the actual frame itself. So we use 11 inch cable ties here so they come in packs of 10 or 100 unfortunately we're only going to need 12 so if you get a pack of 10 you can get two of those which i recommend so if you look here pack of 10 and they're actually uh they're actually 11 inches they're black super important if you get white ones they will be degraded by the sun the polymers will break down and your zip ties are going to break so get some black ones they're uv resistant I can get that here for $3.51 a pack. So that should run you less than $8 if you're in Canada. If you're in the US, you got a great price probably. And that's gonna give you 20 zip ties out of which you're gonna use 12 and you can keep eight on the side if ever you need to do something else or repair or just as a spare part. All right, since I was in the area, I figured I would pop by another local hardware store is that we're going to go in there and I'll show you guys which growing mediums are ideal for these systems or for any containers, really. So uh, we're going to show you that if they have the fertilizer that I use, which they usually do here, I'll show you guys that as well and a couple of other things that will make your system great. All right, let's talk about potting mix for a quick second. The only thing they have in stock right now is this Miracle Grow product, which I hate. 
uh, but it's the only thing that's really suitable at this point. So I'm, I'm not suggesting you buy that, by the way. I just want to show you this product because it has common characteristics with what we want. So uh, when they say potting mix, it's generally not made of soil. It's generally a soilless mix, such as a cocoa-based mix or a peat moss-based mix. In this case, I'm pretty sure that's peat moss. Actually, I know it's peat moss. Uh, the reason why we don't like these products is because one, it's miracle Grow, so you should steer clear of any product made by miracle Grow for, uh, for all kinds of reasons. It's a really bad company, uh, and they use all kinds of chemicals and synthetics, but the real reason I don't want you guys to get this is this here. The 0 0.18, 0 0.10, 0 0.10, that means there is food already in this medium. So the reason we don't want food is one, we want to control how much food goes into our stuff. And two, this is synthetic fertilizer that's in there. So uh, it's not what it's not something that's needed. You're going to pay more for this. It's inferior in terms of product. So I'm going to be showing you guys uh, over the video the right product to get, which is either ProMix or uh, there's Fafar. There's all kinds of brands that sell it. But basically, it's just a soilless mix made of peat moss, perlite. Sometimes there's a bit of vermiculite. And that's what you really need. So at that point, once you've got that product, which is inert, this is what I use as fertilizer. So this is my all-purpose. That's what I use on the farm as well. It's the same brand, Actisol. So you guys have seen that in my videos. So 532 formulation. It's a great general purpose fertilizer, extremely cost effective. Uh, they sell that, that 20 pound bag here for uh, for $17.49. Of course, that's retail price. It's more expensive than I pay, but it's a great, great value for the amount you get. Uh, it won't be sufficient to grow all kinds of high fruiting plants, or at least you won't get maximum performance if you grow these uh, in that uh, fertilizer, because the second and third number there are a little low for my taste. I would prefer a 555. So let's see if we can find their 468 recipe, and then I'll show you guys, or I'll tell you guys what to do with that. All right, closest I could find in terms of formulation is this one here, so 538. So if you were to mix uh, equal parts of the product I just showed you and uh, and that product as well, so that would give you a, a 53 and then 535 or something like that, which is a great all-purpose formula. If you can find their 468 version, it is available, just not here right now. It's early in the season. We still have snow outside, but that's a great product. So mixing the other product with this, is going to give you optimal results. They are both uh, organic certified, at least here in Canada. And so these are really, really great products. I've been using them for years. I know the company personally. I'm not making an advertisement for them. I just really like them because they're really, really great people and their product is really tops. All right, so that's it for today. We're back home. Don't forget to subscribe, like it, share it with your friends. We're going to have the video on how to build this that's dropping on the 15th of March. So you guys can get your hardware before and prepare for that. Until then, keep it green and I'll see you soon.